Hello, I am Sister Magdalena. I am the Director of Hispanic Ministries in Santa Maria de la Paz. And today I want to offer you a meditation on the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 14, beginning on verse 25 and following. Now great multitudes accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, and his wife and children, and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and take counsel, whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an embassy to ask terms of peace. So therefore, whoever of you does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. This is from the Gospel of the Lord according to St. Luke. Uh, first of all, in this Gospel, we notice that Jesus is being followed by a multitude, a crowd. And uh, one of the things that I can say is that the Lord Jesus is not really impressed with us following him in a crowd, but that he turns around and he confronts us with the demands of discipleship. The Lord Jesus puts it very clearly. And there are four points that I can draw from this Gospel. And one of them is that to be a disciple of Jesus Christ means that I renounce my own family, I renounce my own life, I embrace the cross, and I renounce all my possessions. Now, if we think about it, this is a lot uh, to demand from his disciples. The Lord Jesus is really asking them to put him before anything else. Now, if we remember the first commandment is, you shall not have other gods before me. And so in these demands, I believe that the Lord Jesus is asserting his divinity. Who else besides God can demand that we put him before our own family, before our own life, and even and before all of our possessions? And also, who else can demand from us the ultimate sacrifice of embracing the cross, except God himself? A misconception that many people have about God is that we have in our minds a strange idea, I don't know where we get it from, that uh, God's job in our lives, and we will say Jesus' job in our lives, is to make us comfortable, to give us a life free of suffering, and to be there with our, in our trials and our distress, and to be our good friend that is always there when we need him. Even though that is true, we have to notice that the Lord Jesus is also very clear about what he demands of those who decide to follow him. First of all, it's a decision that is free. If I decide to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, that is something that I choose, something that I do out of my own freedom. Nothing is forcing me, nobody is forcing me to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So, but he says, if anyone, if anyone wants to come after me, and then he lays down all his demands. And his demands basically to put him first before anything else, before family, before my own comfort, before my possessions, and also to be willing to suffer for him. Why would anybody desire to renounce all these things, renounce my family, renounce my own life, my possessions, and also embrace suffering? Who would do that and for what reason? You have to have a strong motivation to do all these things. And this strong motivation is Jesus Christ himself, is his person, is the message that he came to give us. Basically, he came to offer us, whoever wants it, to offer us everlasting life, eternal life. And these are the demands of whoever wants to follow him. He is not about the business of making us, making us feel comfortable. He is not about the business of sparing us suffering, necessary suffering but he is about to show us the way to heaven. And the way to heaven, as he said, is narrow and is hard, and there are few who find it. 
he says the way to to hell and to perdition is wide is easy and many are on it so in what way am i am i on the way to heaven or am i on the way to damnation it's a moment to reflect on our own lives what are we doing jesus knows where he is going he knows he's going to the glory of his father he knows how to get there and the way to get there goes through the cross and all of us if we are disciples of jesus christ we need to be willing to go also through our own crosses and not run from them to go through the cross of suffering to the cross of illness of loneliness even to the cross of persecution but to follow him is not about us making our own crosses but it's about us following Jesus in every stage of our lives and embracing the suffering that comes to us as a gift from our Father to prepare us to eternal life. When he turns around to the crowd and explains what he demands of his disciples, he is sobering us up. He is addressing us, each one of us personally, and asking us to examine our lives to see if I have what it takes to follow him. Jesus compels us to realize what is it that we are doing as his disciples and to get ready to attain his promises, especially the promise of everlasting life, so that we can keep going on our journey, but keep going as disciples who are focused on the finish line, which is Jesus Christ himself, which is following him all the way through the cross, but to eternal life. So why would we embrace all this renunciation and all this suffering? There is only one reason that will enable us to go all the way through the cross, and that is the love of Jesus Christ. First of all, to having been loved by him, that we are able to also lay down our life for him. And that way we will also attain his promise, his promise that where he is, my follower will also be even as he was on the cross we will have to embrace our own sufferings in our own life our own life in his name but then also in glory we will be with him at the right hand of the father so god bless you and uh, let's strive for holiness ciao ciao <music>